hello everyone thank you so much for joining us here today as you all know union budget uh, the highly awaited budget was presented on 1st february in the parliament it was really a highly awaited budget because you know considering the fact that it was announced amidst the pandemic which has in turn induced a lot of stress on the it industry uh, so you know in enterprises of all sizes were looking forward to the budget you know to help them out uh, through this situation so have their expectations been met to know more about that we are you know it's a pleasure to have with us here today mr arun s prabhu uh, from cyril amarchand mangaldas he heads the tmp practice at the firm uh, and he's also an expert when it comes to data privacy and protection uh, arun thank you so much for joining us here today it's a pleasure to have you here with us thank you supriya thank you vaishnavi absolute pleasure thank you so much arun Uh, so arun like i said uh, you know industries were looking for various uh, relief measures to help them sail through the pandemic and uh, you know uh, so based on the announcements that were made uh, do you think uh, their expectations were met over to you uh, i think it's a bit of a mixed bag and i also feel that uh, industries uh, are a very heterogeneous group as far as the sector is concerned there was a time when it was just it it as outsourcing uh, maybe software development but today it spans everything from fintech tech fin uh, um, you know the conventional core it industries all, all the way to people who are social media platforms providers and so on and so forth so it's a very very broad base uh, and i think this affects people differently the second point i kind of want to make is that we shouldn't look at this in isolation there's obviously a whole bunch of things that have happened in the context of the pandemic before and after if you look at the amount of regulatory change that's happened in the last two years it's almost unheard of um you know starting with the entire osp regime being liberalized if you're looking at conventional uh, outsourcing providers uh to you know the entire regulation around fintech digital digital banking telemedicine uh, e-commerce so many sectors that we've seen um significant rule making take place for better or for worse uh, we have seen developments but this budget has done while it may not be as broadly focused on all of these industries has is you know strategic interventions i'll give you two quick examples the first of course is the case of data centers now data centers as we know is a very key piece of our digital infrastructure uh you know with the potential changes and we already have localization regimes as far as financial data is concerned as far as insurance data is concerned as far as telecom data is concerned there are so many regimes that require localization there are so many more which are likely to come we've heard of this in the context of e-commerce and of course the big one here is the pdp bill and the entire localization regime under that bill right now all of this will necessarily require infrastructure and storage uh technology solutions in india cannot be slower or less efficient than them anywhere else in the world the, se- the second example i'd like to deal with is cryptocurrencies uh that's another interesting regulatory intervention as the finance minister said yesterday uh while regulation on it is still forthcoming there has been an attempt made to at least remove uh to some extent the ambiguity around the taxation treatment of it um what has interestingly been also done and i'm sure we'll speak about this later in the process what has also been done is including an element of very small element of tds on it uh which automatically to some extent at least improves the traceability of transactions basically taking something that is a a public ledger and building on top of it a taxation transaction to show where something has taken place and between whom um again interesting regulatory intervention um portending potentially more important changes to come uh but um also being perceived at least widely as some degree of certainty in the market and hopefully some intervention or some indication that this is not going to be a complete block again a uh, uh, fairly open ended nothing predictable on this but it is an inter- it is an interesting intervention to say the least thank you arun that is that was brief and that was insightful now expanding on uh, what the finance minister had to announce we did hear a lot of um, brief into how employment opportunities will be generated um, be it the sunrise sectors or be it with other conventional sectors has enough been done for job creation or to bridge the gap of uh, unemployment in the country in the budget i would think so i think um, i think the perception of not enough being done may be driven to some extent by looking at the supply side of this so so you know instead of saying hey have 10000 jobs been created for it people i think india as an economy may to some extent be beyond that 
Uh, what has been done though is strategic interventions in key sectors, whether that is a national language translation program, whether that is an AI program, uh, whether that is the creation of a common market, whether that's part of the national digital health mission, whether that is the data center infrastructure that I alluded to, all of these things, uh, or for that matter, even some of the large infrastructure interventions. Um, the fact remains that the world runs on technology today and India has, uh, frankly, during the pandemic, grabbed with both hands the ability to leapfrog technological uh, you know, innovation by basically, you know, the, the NHAI is a great example when, you know, the entire fast tag uh, system is concerned. We've leapfrogged perhaps several generations in terms of toll collection and so on and so forth. And we're talking about further development. So I feel all of these policy initiatives will lead to follow on technological innovation. The uh, uh, benefits which have been extended to startups and the sort of encouragement that has been given to the startup ecosystem by continuing those benefits will allow people to innovate in a sustainable manner in space. And fundamentally, the combination of the two will create its own demand. Uh, I don't think it, this is any longer an economy where, you know, which has to be shown where jobs have to be created. This is an economy that will create its job in the most efficient sectors. Um, if you create the demand and you create the market for it and you have a billion plus people to create that demand and create that market as the pandemic has shown. Uh, so Arun, if I had to ask you, uh, what are some of the announcements, you know, that uh, could have actually helped the industry, which could have been announced, uh, you know, uh, in terms of expectations and, you know, the, the things that you have seen, what more could have been announced? So I, again, um, this may not be a very popular view. Um, there were obviously um, asks around uh, taxation treatment, asks around further deductions, asks around personal taxation changes. Um, but realistically speaking, I also feel like I mentioned earlier that this is kind of the tip of the iceberg. Um, while uh, you know the, the regulatory environment in which an industry operates is a combination of many, many things. And as we've seen in the case of e-commerce or seen in the case of insurance, sometimes treatment of FDI in a sector or treatment of uh, you know, the rules around consumer protection in a sector can have a far more disproportionate impact on a sector than a taxation treatment. Uh, so, so again, uh, at the risk of sounding optimistic, I fundamentally feel that um, you know, more of this has to come. We're going to see a lot of interventions this year, right? Hopefully the personal data protection bill is actually going to be passed. You're going to see final versions or perhaps some judicial pronouncements on intermediary regulation. There is talk of the new e-commerce policy and the e-commerce regulations coming out. We've seen the RBI come out with its report on digital lending. We've seen things come out in, uh, you know, as far as crypto is concerned, again, the stage has been set. Fundamentally, I feel that this is just the tip of the iceberg. The budget is not the only place where these interventions happen. Um, I Yes, obviously, you know, there are people uh, older, wiser and more fervent than me, uh, most of whom are entrepreneurs who operate in the sector, who have spoken uh, loudly and emphatically about more things that could have been done. My personal perspective on this, of course, is that this is, uh, you know, this is one of those years where uh, you have to balance uh, uh, an economy which may potentially be um, looking at some degree of stress, which may be potentially looking at some degree of uh, which which has extremely significant growth expectations, a share market that is getting used to a completely new role, a new kind of issuer, a new kind of investor, and so on and so forth. Much innovation happening in the financial space. So I think there are naturally constraints around what can be and cannot be done. Thank you, Arun. Uh, and thank you for giving us... Uh... A little of un unconventional view on that as well. I don't know. Let's come to the million dollar question. And you are rightly placed to explain the fine print. So if you can tell uh, the viewers and the listeners about the 30% tax on virtual assets. Now, what counts as virtual assets? And uh, though the government never mentioned cryptocurrency explicitly, what comes in it? What, um, what all is included? If you can tell us a little bit about that. So, so I'll firstly caveat by saying that there is still some fine print to be done. Right? So for instance, when it talks about non-fungible tokens, um, that has been left, left open-ended. There is a, a provision for notification around some language there. Um, specifically, separately, the actual core regulation which is supposed to regulate this sector is also yet to be done. But fundamentally to my mind, in principle, what's been done here is to treat assets and flows from the transaction of crypto, uh, uh, from transactions in cryptocurrencies and crypto assets in 
lined with certain other asset classes. Now, obviously, this has been done in a much narrower way. There are, for instance, the number of the, the deductions you can claim from it are limited. Um, the ways in which you can set off things are limited. Um, the expenses that you can claim are, are limited. Um, there's obviously the TDS component, which has been done very differently. So, but but I think the intent has been to say, look, there's going to be no tax arbitrage between this class of assets and another class of assets. Um, I, I honestly, and, and, and my reading doesn't really go far beyond that in terms of what has been attempted. Um, much remains to be done. There is a regulator to come in on this. We've seen the RBI, for instance, been heavily involved in the regulation of this. We've seen the litigation surrounding this area. So to my mind, uh, much of that is still to be written. But yes, cryptocurrencies or virtual assets as a class are now sort of uh, a part of a reality. Second, they are going to be tracked both in terms of audit and in terms of uh, TDS. Uh, and to my mind, that is going to create, have its own sort of impact. Um, and you've, you've obviously been tracking the market reactions on that closer than I have. Uh, some people have seen this as a, as, a, as a positive sign because it has given a sense of predictability. I draw an analogy, for instance, to the to the sector around uh, you know online gaming, uh, which again because of some predictable some some judicial decisions in that case, but there was predictability to the sector, and we've seen the explosion of innovation and growth that has happened in that sector uh, over the last few years. So so to my mind, I think uh, you know this may be the beginning of something new. How it will, uh, how it will play out and how it will actually be treated by the market, um, especially in a market which has not been used to these kind of factors. Remains to be seen. I don't know. A lot of industry reactions has have been uh, positive. It says, okay, it gives us an it gives an impetus. Now, there's one question I want to ask you: Does it give a legal standing to crypto now that it is taxed? I I, I wouldn't think so. There are there are I mean, uh, at the risk of being indelicate, there are case laws around far less um, honorable activities. Uh, still being subject to taxation, um, it's it's it's. Uh, I think it's a fallacy to say that if tax is collected on something, it's automatically fully recognized. I don't think that's the case. Um, at the same time, one hopes that you know, um, uh, and I say this with great hesitation, and I don't think this should be taken as a um, any sort of uh, indication of planning future actions or planning future behavior. One hopes though that you know, given that this has been treated as a certain kind of asset class. There will be more thinking about this, both on the part of the regulator and the government, and some regulation on this in more tangible ways will happen. There's obviously been a lot of talk back and forth about this, ban it completely, draft bill has been out, um, there has been the RBI notice on it, there has been the Supreme, there's, there's a lot which has been said about the sector, and I don't think that conversation is over, uh, definitely not because of the tax proposals. Okay. Thank you, Arun, thank you for that clarification. Uh, now, coming to the investors part of crypto, now there is now that the taxation part has come in, we are a little closer to the boost in the industry or some kind of recognition from the government. Oh, are there laws to protect investor interests? Uh, not as much in certain as as there are in certain kinds of asset classes, right? So if you look at, for instance, real estate, you have RERA, which is a specific law which has been created around protection, um, of, you know, of home buyers, but to some extent also investors in this space. There are asset classes which are better regulated. There are asset classes which are worse regulated. Um, um, to my mind, this taxation treatment, I mean, with the exception of saying, hey, listen, there was TDS on this transaction. So, so we know this transaction has actually taken place. I've returned, I've reported it in my account. So it's actually taken place. There's been a swap of crypto assets and I've had to do the net cash uh, I have to deem the cash payment of it and do whatever has to be done under like any other asset swap. Um, all of these, to my mind, increase the audit trail that exists around a transaction, which provides for greater protection. But beyond that, I don't think the regulatory footprint on this has expanded significantly. Okay. So while we await the regulation that is supposed to come in this session, uh... I, I, I'm very cautious. Look, it's 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 very. Uh, uh, this is uh, there's a fallacy which goes around sectors which are either poorly regulated or underregulated. Uh, where you know any sort of uh, you know dubte ko tinke ka sahara kafi hai. The moment you see something happening, you say, hey, okay, finally. Uh, I, I I think that's a case. This is a case of that. I think we should really wait for the regulation on this to come out in a much clearer form. Arun, what kind of queries are you getting uh, from your uh, from your consumers or from enterprises or from IT clients regarding this? So again, it's uh, it's these are. 
It's a very recent development and the queries are very much in the same tone and tenor as this conversation saying, hey, what does this mean? Is it better for us? Is it worse for us? How do we do this? How do we do that? And a lot of that still has to be fleshed out. Um, there will potentially be some further clarifications on certain kinds of things. So, so early days yet, to be frank. Oh, this is not billable, okay? <laughs> this... <laughs> Never billable with you guys. Never. <laughs> Thanks, Arun. Uh, is there anything that you want to add that we might have missed out on? Yeah, that, that was what I was coming at, you know, for one final uh, question. I mean, Arun, uh, you're an expert, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, data protection and data privacy. And, you know, you, you also advised a lot of companies on uh, uh, digital banking and things like that. So what is the mood of the industry right now? I mean, based on your experience. Post budget. I know it's too early. It's been a day, but still, early reactions. Uh, I've not heard anything overwhelmingly negative. Um, uh, I I do feel uh, this. These are industries which are used to operating in regulatory gray spaces. These are industries which are used to innovating very quickly. These are industries which which lead the market rather than follow it. Some of them create their own market. Um, you know, it's not a conventional kind of industry where somebody is waiting for the next taxation provision or the next, um, you know, taxation change, uh, customs duty change to, you know, fundamentally change their bottom line or, or waiting for that as an industry. I think they've they've always forged their own road. Um, the conversations I've had since the budget have been broadly positive. Um, I think to some extent there is a relief that nothing massive has changed, um, nothing has hammered things downwards, nothing has has. Uh, drastically, you know, worsened the operating position. There is a sense of disappointment that maybe more could have been done. It's a bad year, stimulus, et cetera, et cetera. But I honestly feel that people are soldiering on. At least that's my perception of it. Again, you must look at this from the perspective of us being lawyers. So, so you know, people will come with uh, come to us with legal problems. I'm sure the accountants and and and, and tax advisors are having. Um, you know, more interesting conversations around, for instance, some of the deduction changes which have happened and so on, uh, which will which will obviously be uh, debated far more hotly with them. Uh, Arun, thank you so much. I mean, it was, uh, Ashnami, do you have anything more to ask? Yeah. Thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure listening to you. And, you know, it was like Vaishnavi said, a very unconventional view. I'm sure even our audience will appreciate it a lot. Uh, so we truly appreciate you taking time out to talk to us. We understand how busy you are. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Supriya. Thanks, Vaishnavi. Great conversation. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much.